Hey all, let's talk about how to get a simple Ubuntu server set up and running within, uh, within Amazon EC2. Um, the assumption is that uh, you already have a Amazon um, AWS account, uh, basically over here, uh, so you can go and do your sign up and all of that. Uh, the other thing that you're going to need are the uh, are the PuTTY tools under Windows. So uh, I'll go over here to Google. Um, I already have them installed on this machine. If you don't uh, do a simple Google search for PuTTY, you'll find uh, the first link here. And uh, then when you go to download, uh, you can just scroll down. And um, basically for Windows, the best bet is to, uh, is to go to this part here, this putty installer, um, exe, And that will, uh, that will actually install everything that you're going to need to be able to, uh, to interact with, uh, with Amazon. All right, over on, uh, on the Amazon console here, I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And here I have my Amazon console up. Now, as I showed in class, what we what I tend to do is uh, is I use Elastic for uh, for their images. So I'm gonna go over here to Elastic.com, and recall, I'll just go to select a particular region. So we're in the East, so I'll select East, and uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, with the latest uh, version of Ubuntu, the the 12.04. And again, we want the EBS boot. Uh, image so that basically this first one here when I click that it actually pops open um, since I'm already logged in to uh, to the console takes me over to there all set to actually uh, to actually create the instance okay so it selected the Amy for me um, so we should be good to go for that so I'll click continue um, we come here and recall I mean basically uh, we have our options for the particular size of image micro should be fine for what we're doing um, we're not going to deal with any we're not going to change anything else um, and we'll go ahead and click continue now on this page uh, you can basically uh, pretty much ignore all of this skip this stuff just go ahead and click continue um, again here we don't have to worry about anything um, on this page so we can click continue there finally you get to uh, to your key pairs okay so um, now in my case I happen to have a number of key pairs already created again you'll probably need to uh, to create at least one um, so you'll go to your create key pair and the first thing you need to do is uh, is give it a name okay so I'll call it uh, demo key all right and then i'm going to go ahead and click the create and download your key pair now remember this is the critical step because this is the only time we'll actually be able to uh to download this key if we don't get it here or if we lose it we'll have to actually create um another key um and and furthermore if we had other instances that were using this key we'd have to reconfigure them and so forth all right so i click that and it is actually downloading my demo key.pem. Okay, so it downloaded that. Um, that actually is over in my uh, over in um, my downloads directory. And so all I'm going to do is basically just drag that off of screen here um, right onto my desktop. I'm going to use that in a minute, um, just not yet. So I'll throw it on the desktop here so that uh, so that I can come back to it later when we need it. Okay. Next part is um, is the security group. Okay, so the security group basically uh, is the firewall settings. Again, uh, there's there's sort of a default version and so forth. Um, you can actually configure these things. Uh, for our purposes right now, the main thing we're going to need is something that has that provides SSH access. Uh, to show you kind of how you would do that, you come into uh, create a security group again. Um, so I'll call it demo for uh, for our purposes. Um, you do also need a description. Again, I'll use demo for that and then you can come right to here to set up your uh, your rule okay so it turns out that actually um, this is already set up Amazon already knows about uh, about SSH so I can basically just select that and say add rule if I wanted to add things like HTTP I could do that right there's HTTP so if I was running a web server on uh, on my system I would probably want to enable that as well I'll leave these um, and then go ahead and click continue 
Um, again, if you figure out later on that you need to uh, add additional per, um, permissions and so forth, you can do that. Uh, basically, you just have to come back and change, uh, change the settings in the particular security group. Okay, so now that we have this set up, um, basically it's just giving us a quick little review before we, uh, before we go ahead and launch, and so now I'll say launch. Okay. So at this point, it's, uh, it's, it's trying to do all of the setup, right? So I can click here to, uh, to go to my instances page. Um, actually, I'm not sure why it's showing that. All right, let me go back over to instances itself, and we can see there is my, uh, there is my instance starting up. Okay, so my instance is starting up. Now, while it's doing that, um, I can actually play around with that key file that we talked about before. Okay, so I come back over here. The thing is this, to SSH into the system, what we're going to need to, or what we're going to use is PuTTY. Okay. So over here in my program groups, I can go to PuTTY. And there are a number of different tools. Now, the problem is that the private key, that demo key.pem file, isn't understood by PuTTY directly. So what I need to do is convert that to be able to be used for by PuTTY itself. And to do that, I'm going to use this PuTTY Gen program. So I run that, and it looks like this. Okay, so it comes up, and it says uh, PuTTY Key Generator. What I want to do is to load the key. Okay, now I'm going to load the key, and I'm going to go to my desktop. And um, the other thing I need to do now is come over to here to change the filter to all files so that I'll actually be able to see um, the particular file, namely demo key.pem. So I grab that, go ahead and click open, and you'll notice it says, yes, it's been successfully imported. Click OK. All right, now that we have that, all I need to do is do a save private key. Okay. It will ask me, do I want to create a passphrase for this key? I'm not going to bother doing that, so I'll just say, yes, I'm, I'm sure that I want to uh, create it without a password. And again, it basically then pops up a dialogue saying, where do you want to save this? Okay, so I'll call it demo private key. Um, I will leave this PPK. That's the file format that PuTTY likes. Click Save, um, and now I can close PuTTY Key Generator. Okay, so that generated on my desktop this file. Okay, so demo private key.ppk. This is the file that uh, that we actually need to uh, that we actually need to be able to access um, the server. If I double click on this um, down in the lower right, and you can't see it here, but in the lower right of my screen on the taskbar, I'll see a similar little icon, um, and that is the pageant program, um, namely this program here, um, actually running with that key loaded. So that means we're basically ready to go. All right. At this point, I should be able to go back, and hopefully my server is actually running. And it says uh, it does, in fact, say that it's running, so I should be able to uh, to go ahead and access that. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll just scroll down here to find my public DNS. Okay, so my public DNS, which is listed right here, this is the IP address of the server. Okay, so I'm going to just select this and do a copy. And then from there, I'm going to run PuTTY. Okay. So I run PuTTY. Um, I happen to have a little bit of a little configuration set up for PuTTY. Um, I'm sorry, for, uh, for Amazon. So notice I've named it EC2. Now, the basic settings that, that you need um, are you want to have Ubuntu at. Ubuntu is the default user for the Ubuntu images. And then the stuff after the at is, uh, is what needs to be the public DNS that we just copied. So I just selected the one that was there and clicked paste. In your case, you would just type in Ubuntu at and then uh, paste in your, your public DNS. Okay, since I've changed this, I'm going to actually make a save. Okay, again, um, for our cases in the, um, in the class, when you need to record all of your stuff, you'll also want to make sure that your logging settings are changed. So you'll probably change this to printable output, make sure that it's saving on the desktop, etc. Not going to bother with that for right now. All right, so I have my, uh, my EC2 stuff set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click open, cross our fingers, and hopefully we should be able to get in. So I click open. If everything's been uh, been set properly, we should get something like this saying the server's host key is not cached in the registry. That's fine. We'll click yes. 
and now we wait a second as it tries to log in. Notice it tries to log in using the, the username Ubuntu. And once you get to this prompt, you're actually in. And at this point, you're ready to go. Have fun.